Right, hello everyone, welcome back to Titanic Honor and Glory. We are here almost uh, on board the Titanic for the third demo edition uh, of the upcoming game, which is kind of embargoed until today. So thankfully this has been recorded in advance and is now being uploaded on this day, which the, um, it should be publicly available. Um, the reason I've got it on the pause menu is because one of the things they have added is in fact a narration. So, um, let's just dive on in. Sit back and enjoy the ride. First the train from London to Liverpool, then a short trip to the docks where I boarded the ferry to Dublin, then the long train ride from Ireland to Belfast. Not a bad ride, but excruciating long. Check in at the guest house in the town proper, quick supper, quick sleep, quick breakfast, and hop on the local train here to the Harlem Wolf shipyard. Fortunately, it was punctual. I was worried about being tardy from being three hours early. My darling Claire always said to me, Robin, you better get out of the house right now and go be useful to someone. She always did lovingly encourage me to show up for work early and give my best effort. Being no different from the Olympic. They're structurally identical. The Olympic underwent these trials months ago, so this should be a simple repeat. I board, observe her during the sea trials, vote aye or nay on her certification, and then I ride her back to Southampton. Come on, Robin, you can't mess this one up, as Claire always told me. Okay, so we're here. Um, so, uh, I'm going to apologize for the previous segment because you'll have my face. Uh, this isn't a reaction video reaction channel, it's just that I don't have a hotkey to be able to change between the scene because I have like quite a considerable number of different scenes available for whatever I'm recording. Um, and so, yeah, so you kind of had to watch me in silence there. In any case, would you look at this? This is the RMS Titanic and there is something a lot more splendid about being able to see it in this view. Let's look at the positive. It's like The weather broke and now I've been given the opportunity to board the Titanic in advance of the trials. This gives me a bit of time to really admire the beauty of the ship before I have to scrutinize every last aspect of her functionality. Yes, it is certainly impressive like nothing else. So because um, because it is the kind of important bit of the mod, uh, the mod, the demo, um, I will be keeping quiet during um, talking, um, as in when the narrator is talking. And for the meanwhile, we will, um, we will, uh, we will, um, do a commentary. I am sighing because I know what's coming. This, for a demo, has to be one of the dumbest things I've seen. So, we go from leaving the, um, the grand views of the Titanic and the grand views of our train, which had only one passenger and no crew. <laughs> this is still a mod, this is still a work in progress. But they play, they play on that just about now. I had better find my way aboard. But I suppose there isn't reason for too much haste. No one else has even arrived yet, it seems. No one arrived. Plenty of time to explore the fire design. I'm so quite surprised by the amount of confidence the industry is placing into this ship. She's not even certified yet, and her first ticketed voyage is just a week from now. No room for failure on these trials, I suppose. It's like getting dressed up for a date when you haven't even begun your courtship yet. How do you know if you'll be rejected or not? I learned that one the hard way. So yes, um, now we begin the single most annoying thing in a demo I've ever seen. So yeah, we're free to explore, we've got little houses and things and yada yada yada. Now the game, the, the demo suddenly turns... The fast lock is beautiful. With the hills around it and the morning fog, it reminds me of what I always imagined Puget Sound would be like. 
A man sure can make a living out in Seattle, if he can hold off the play. Yes, this is going to be one of the most annoying segments of anything I've ever seen in my life. Rather than just being able to kind of run and go through and the, join on to the Titanic, you've got to go through a puzzle, like a, 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 a labyrinth puzzle, before you can get on. I've never seen like in an exploration like thing for a demo. I don't think from what I know of the plot of the game that this will feature in the game. So why they've gone to the length to make this such I see they're doing all they can to extend my travel time. How do I find my way through this mess? Yes. So how do you find your way through all of this mess? Well, let me show you how you find your way through all of this mess. Is it this way? No, it's this way. So basically, you, you think that you found your way to the gangway up on board. The beautiful, the wonderful RMS Titanic. The very thing that you downloaded six gigabytes worth of demo for. You come up to the gangway. Gangway? That's a fun word. Um, you come up to the gangway. I'm all aboard. Go up the creaky ass steps. And what do we find? They couldn't simply move these signs out of the way. This vessel has triple screws. Yes, I feel the same way right now too, thank you. Yes, uh, so we can't actually get in this way, which is which is silly. I, I don't know why they've decided to add this. This literally serves nothing. Because my first thought was it was a way of getting a little bit more narrative across, but actually the, the Mr. Narrator dude doesn't actually speak very much during this thing. So it's just an episode on frustration, which we are now going to fast forward through. just can't beat that train carriage arrangement. It really stretched my cognitive abilities. People simply aren't stimulated enough these days. Claire tells me that every night. So yes, and after seven centuries, we finally reached the gangway that we need to go on to, which we will now remark in a second. gangway is blocked, I'll board here through the first class. And it's when you get up close that you kind of see just how big and grand this ship once was it is truly phenomenal in stature um, and all that is left to do is board the RMS Titanic which we now will so we're going into first class Right, so welcome aboard the RMS Titanic. We are quite familiar with this place because this is, I think, the second time that we've seen this specific location. Um, and so we're now here for a somewhat guided tour of the Titanic. Now, um, a lot of this we have seen already because it's kind of an amalgamation of the two uh, original demos along with some Most extra features. This space should be accessible at the moment. But I may be able to venture down to third class for a spell through Scotland Road on E deck. I believe I'm boarding before anyone else. Robin, right now you're the most handsome man on the Titanic. <laughs> well played. Um, yeah, so there's a number of features. I don't remember this being here. That seems somewhat dangerous. Anyway, so this is the RMS Titanic in Belfast, still under construction, so we can't quite to get absolutely everywhere we have boarded in D deck so we're gonna go and go up we're here at the grand staircase and so let's go on upstairs so this is this is here we can't get onto a deck not on this floor we can at the aft grand staircase, so we'll do that in a little minute. Um, but this is basically. I shouldn't venture too far on deck. The board of trade members may board soon, and I'm expected to meet them. 
<laughs> um, so yes, this is the boat deck above and then the A deck all the way down here. Um, we're going to go down to B deck, which is kind of slightly less ridiculous rooms and as you can see it is a lovely part of the ship we've got doors we can lifts are out of order that's fine real men don't take lifts lifts are for women claire says robin take the long way up <laughs> uh his wife's mean anyway um so this is the b deck which is mostly just luxurious cabins i do indeed believe um so Having a little explore down cabins here. Upon cabins upon cabins upon cabins upon cabins upon cabins. There's a lot of cabins! So yes, you can kind of see all the people that were on board the Titanic when it gone down smashed into the iceberg. And so actually one one thing you don't quite get the sense of is just actually how compact a ship it was. I mean like this isn't this isn't very big at all. Uh, you, you you kind of expect these grand wide corridors that just uh, they're not there. It's a very tight ship, surprisingly so. And um, right. So oh, what's in here? Ah, secretaries and things. Okay. Okay. So this is the aft grand staircase that we are on. Love the wood detailing here. It's absolutely perplexing. Now that's a craft I can really respect. Lovely wood. <laughs> and so... Been fun. So when younger, <laughs> I used to cut wood for the poor folks two streets over. My neighbours started calling me Robin Wood. They always laughed at but I don't know why. I wore that title proudly. So yes, um, we are going to have quite a lot of vomit, uh, vomiting of exposition. Um, so yes, from the aft grand staircase we can get onto A deck and see the wonderful executive cabins that they have, which is a room for three people here. Is that a camera? It is, it's an old camera, cool. Um, so this is one of the cabins. The smoking room is visible, although we can't actually get into it, and we'll be about to remark. What a fine accommodation for the unwinding of the gentlemanly sort after a long day at sea. The gentlemanly sort? If only it were open now, and there were men in there to socialize with, perhaps then I'd make some friends. I have turned off the little icons just so that we can um, see what's going on. So this is the kind of part where you, um, if you look, if just where the uh, the kind of couch, where well where the box between the couches are is where Buck Riviera used to sit in the Titanic, an adventure out of time, which will be making an appearance in this video as I so amusingly found out. So we've tried to go down here in the past. We've already been in the A deck cabins, but I see here. Why does this surprise me? His drawings are scattered about like toys in a nursery. <laughs> well, I shouldn't intrude here any longer. Yes, so um, this has... Um, that's Thomas Andrews' room, who is the designer of the RMS Titanic, um, which we have seen before. Now, we've uh, we've been in these places it does before. does remind you of Paris. No, excepting the smell of overflowing sewage. <laughs> Wonderful memories are coming back to me of that city. So, the thing I like about this is um, everything is nice and sharp and like you can look at the windows and actually see things now. And um, like, because you get up to the, the thing, look how clear the photograph is. So there, this is this is all pretty pretty damn cool. Uh, there's a number of little stuff scattered around the place. This is the restaurant where we um, where we oh, have this visited room before. This table is already set. Mr. Gotti hasn't even boarded yet. Oh well, top marks for presentation. Yes. So apparently, this dining room was so executive that it wasn't even counted in the cost of your ticket on board the Titanic, even if you bought into a deck which is like the most executive um, places um, you you had to pay each and every time you wish to dine in this restaurant I can't actually remember what it's called 
That's the menu, which we don't want. I think it's just called the restaurant. I don't know how it had a specific name. This was the Cafe Parisienne, um, which does have a specific name. And right, so where do we want to go? From C Deck, there's not too many places we can do, so we can go. So we may as well go downstairs. And we'll get a look at another one of the cabins. Um, so this wasn't opened up before, but we've seen into the A Deck cabins. We're in C Deck, and see, look, look how clear the map is. Like I think, yeah. I mean, I, I've seen modern. I've seen modern titles where if you get this close to one of the images, it just goes. <laughs> um, but this is not like that at all. And you can see um, all of the people that were on board: doctor, assistant, doctor, steward, restaurant manager. Um, all these people. And if you look at the rooms, so for some of the rooms, like the one that we're about to go into, it doesn't have many onboard facilities other than just a bed um, and a little sink to freshen yourself up. Whereas if you look at the houses, so I don't actually have a, a cross here so you can't quite see what I'm looking at, but if you look between cap uh, cabin C66 and C64, you've basically got, um, you've got the three beds in the cabin, each has its own cupboard for storing things. The two rooms share a bathroom and toilet rather than having to go to the kind of communal ones which are available in other parts of the ship. That's the gents there and that's the ladies there. Um, and the bathhouse so they don't have to go to the shared baths. And also if you look at C62 you notice there's no beds. The beds are denoted by a number. Um, there's no beds because this is the sitting room, the cabin C64. It's like you can have your own sitting room in a cabin, it's just... Uh. So this is one of the places that you can't go. You see all the little circles and lines just in the middle of the screen at the moment. This is the kind of dining room for stewards and maids and assistants who aren't allowed to dine with everyone else. Um, so that's there on the map, but it's otherwise unaccessible at this moment. So um, this is the lavatory, which we don't want to be in. This is where we want to be. So this is all kind of important people's. So I've got the doctor, restaurant manager, and chief steward. Um, bucket of paint, and the room that is open is here. Now whose room is it? So let's look at the medallion. Mr. Austin Partner. So if we pop into this room, so this is a sea deck cab uh, cabin room. It's quite cozy, but down this end of the ship, it is not amazingly grand. I don't know where that's supposed to be. But yes, so, oh, it tells you, but you can't use them in. What? No, 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 can't read it. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a sea deck cabin. Cozy, comfortable, but ultimately small. Oh, it's got a wee radiator. Yes, uh, it's, oh, it's just floating. <laughs> um, it is ultimately quite small, so I, I can only imagine what D, E, and F deck uh, storage would be like. Um, so the maids dining room is in here. The maids and valet dining room is in here, which we can't actually get to at the moment. We've seen the barber shop already. We're about to make a remark on it. I wonder if the barber will be on board for the run to Southampton. Lord knows I should fancy a shave after my journey here. Speaking of bars, I'm quite glad old Harry's there to look after Claire while I'm away. They always were fond of each other, and when my son was born, Harry was particularly fond of him. Never missing a birthday. See, this is the kind of friend a man really needs. His presence seems to even alleviate her hysteria condition. It's fine, they're not having an affair. They might be having an affair. Um, okay, so we'll head back along sea deck, because we've seen... Let's have a look at the map. We've seen everything that is available to be seen upon this here deck. Uh, like I say, a lot of this has been seen before, so... Ooh. Ah, so this is, this is a double... A double bedded cabin in C deck. You can kind of peep into some of the rooms, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see, is there anything here open? No, it is not. So if we get along to kind of where we saw on the map, so you'll see if we go to put information on. See, do 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 do. Is that another side? Uh, 
Yeah, here you go. So this is one. So this is C55 is one of the sitting rooms for the Strausses who are based here and I think we might have a room there as well. Either that they bought it and never actually filled it. Um, because rich people can do what rich people want. Anyway, this is C deck. This is the scene where Smevels diligently stands. Uh, day and night in Titanic and adventure out of time and this is also where the purser is accessible a purser who makes a strange appearance in in this if we get close to the door <laughs> oh, I burst out laughing when I, when I saw that um, yeah so <laughs> this is the purser's office it's actually quite fancy when you get to see it in, in person um, but that is all of the explorable areas on C Deck. D Deck, they actually opened up the restaurant. So we have seen the piano, which is over there, which is one of three that they hold on board the Titanic. I especially commend them for modifying the bulkhead. I never cared much for what was on the Olympic. Okay, um, so this is the restaurant, which we can only get to a small part of, but you can actually just kind of see the scale of it. And I'm not really sure where to, um, but during um, during one of the days, all of this tables and chairs were cleared away, and uh, mass was held. You can see that on the pianos there. Uh, a mass was held, and this was used as somewhat of a church. And it is a hugely, hugely grand room. I see many of the tables are already set. There will be a fine banquet here for company and partner representatives, myself included, along with the one and only paying passenger joining us on our way to Southampton this evening. Huh. I didn't know that. There was one one, uh, one passenger aboard the trial. Um, yes. Big and fancy. Anyway, that is all to see on C Deck. So let's fire down to D Deck. No, we're on, no, sorry. That's all to see on D Deck. <laughs> Let's fire on down to E deck. I don't think there's any. In fact, no, we're not going to do this. We're going to fire ourselves all the way down to F deck. And I don't don't recall that there's anything new here. But I I did get a wee bit of a kind of a laugh. So the Titanic was full of features. This is a Turkish bath, which we will remark. A nice Arabian motif with cooling colours as passengers relax after their time in the baths. What a poor state these workers left it in. Hmm. Oh yes, there are there's rubbish everywhere. Is that a cookie? It is. Um so if we go through so we've seen the um electric bath, which Who is earth is that lucky dog testing out the electric bath. <laughs> and I believe I see a sliver of the plunge bath as well. Yes, so this is the electric bath, which uh, quite famously is where, um, what's his name? Willie Von Halitz? Um, well, yes, Willie Von Halitz um, passed away during an accident in the electric bath in Titanic, an adventure out of time, which happened just a couple of episodes ago. But this is the electric bath. And here we can actually see Titanic's onboard swimming pool, which is uh, not something that does feature in Titanic and Adventure Out of Time. And how cool! I mean, like, I mean, may maybe it's just because I, I studied history for so long. Because, like, if you've been on a cruise, you will like see that like most cruise ships now have like so many um, like swimming pools and stuff on them. It's like, oh, it's got a swimming pool on it. Okay, so what? But like. This is back in the day where ships quite re regularly just broke apart because of a lack of understanding of like engineering and things. They got the principles, but ultimately not the like the build quality and the kind of structural integrity um, that we enjoy today. So like a, a swimming pool on board a a liner is uh, is pretty damn cool. So anyway, the last thing we have to show you is E deck, and as you can see, some of the rooms have been opened on up. So this is um, the... This is glorious. You can near well see half the length of the ship in this corridor. Excellent. Um, so yes, Scott, that was the point in Scotland Road. But this is the cruel lavatory where uh, all of the stewards had to kind of share. Um, and this is the crew bunks. As you can see, it's a whole heap less luxurious than the um, first... Se and second class cabins that we have seen here. I got some firefighting equipment. 
Um, let's fire on backwards. So we've been down here in previous episodes. This is the third class dining area, which has opened up to its full extent now. So yes, there is a lot of seating for third class individuals. Um, and we'll just go to the back of the ship. I actually can't remember in my quick run through. No. Okay, so there's nothing else that we can visit down here. So we're basically got more crew cabins, chef, the baker, who's here? The smoke room keeper, eh, fancy position. Got another bulkhead that takes On us after the, the ship. Stores, crew compartments and stern of the ship. No need to go this way. Yeah. Uh, emergency door don't you know where this leads? Storekeepers, musicians, so they all share the dorm in there. And the stewards to the engineers. <laughs> Superior stewards, eh. Superior stewards toilet. So um, that is basically as far as you can go in the RMS Titanic at this time, save for one feature, which is probably the one time that the uh, the, the the voiceover has kind of uh, make, makes this whole half hour adventure into the bowels of the Titanic worth it. So let us look for an open door up ahead. Oh dear, the, the door, door is open. open. Perhaps I'm not supposed to look in here, but I can't pass up this opportunity for a little adventure. Oh, if Claire were here now to see me being so daring. So daring? <laughs> uh, yes. So this is boiler room number four? Nope, six. Um, okay. So we can go up. It doesn't lead us anywhere, but we can go up. How by Edward did I get myself here? Climbing too high, I think. No, Robin, it's not your time to get your <laughs> angel wings just yet. No, not just yet. I'm actually not quite sure where this leads. Um, in any case, you can just see the very bottom of the smokestack here, which is what this kind of wacky internal pack, pack, package passage is for. But not only can we go up, we can go down into um, G deck. Then to the orb up, and further down into the bowels of the It's quite hot here. Where are the workers, though? Well, I suppose they're likely firing up the other boiler room. So this is the boiler room. So basically, each... Um... Ah, oh, these things are just freaking huge. Um, each one of the... Oh, no, hang on. So there's ladders here. Can we go all the way around? Ah, we can, no, we can't because there's buckets in the way. But yeah, you can jump down. And um, so the Titanic was fitted with. Oh god, I can't remember how many of these there were, but there were a lot um, of these three hold. Um, oh, I can't get down this way. Furnaces for propelling the ship. These machines are massive. 29 on board, propelling 29. the ship there we through go. the water like an untamed beast. I anxiously await their performance during the sea trial shortly. Finally free and not held back from anything. No Mr. Tundry in sight. Just freedom. So basically the Titanic had, um, had, I can't remember how many of that breakdown, I guess it must have been 20. No, that doesn't make sense. Basically, they had a lot of these double-ended ones. So around the other side, there's also these same holes for stoking into the fire. And then at the ends of the ship, they only had, like, one end, not double-ended ones. And another little, again, nice shout out to the Titanic and Adventure of the Time is the Rubaiyat of Obakai. Uh, I can't remember what it's called. The, the Rubaiyat, um, which is, like, the key plot device of Titanic and Adventure Out of Time is visible. Um, a nice little nod. And so, I do indeed believe, let me just double check the map which I have open on the screen next to me. Yes, so that is absolutely everything in this, the third demo of Titanic and Adventure Out of Time. Let us get a nice view for us to end 
our video on. Yeah, okay, okay. So yes, um, the the, the while well, the work is coming on quite all nicely, and other than a floating radi radi radiator, and uh, there is no bugs or issues, which is always awesome to see, particularly in a game as graphically complicated uh, as this is. Everything is performing exquisitely well, I do have to say, um, and I also I should probably say that I am not being paid. I bought my copy in advance of Titanic, an adventure out of time. Ooh, another photo. Uh, 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 okay, I don't know what that is. Um, yes, um, I am genuinely starting to get ever more excited to the launch of this game. Um, but we've now seen everything there is to see in the current demo editions of Titanic and Adventure Out of Time. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say thank you very much for watching this demo footage of the... I said Titanic and Adventure Out of Time, fuck. <sighs> thank you very much for watching the third demo footage from Titanic. Honor and Glory, which is an upcoming title, um, which is going to be based on the good ship, the Royal Mail Ship Titanic. Um, I mean, everything just looks absolutely spectacular. I'm very much looking forward to this. Um, but there are no more demos coming anytime soon, so we will return next Friday to Titanic, an adventure out of time. So I'm going to say, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching this episode of Titanic Honor and Glory, and I'll see you next time.